Hi, I'm Kristen, and I suffered a concussion on July 26, 2016, and it changed my life. I'd been working full-time in the horse industry for nearly 10 years. I did a little bit of everything, like you have to, to make a living at it, but I lived for riding. I especially enjoyed working with challenging horses. I was fearless and sticky. Until in June 2016, I came unstuck. I had whiplash, but I hadn't actually hit my head, and it was the middle of competition season, so I carried on. It was the next fall, on that hot day in July, that I hit the back of my helmet on the ground. And as I felt that tap in my head, I knew I should stop. But I was embarrassed. I had an audience, I finished the ride. And it was my last real ride. I will never be able to ride like that again. You know, I wish I hadn't been so hard on myself as a rider. I wish I would have bought those competition photos instead of waiting for my act to be better or for the jumps to be more impressive before I felt like I could be proud of them. After the ride, I drove home. But something strange started happening. Every time I pulled up to an intersection, I couldn't remember where I was until I read the street signs. After I got home, I stepped in the shower and just stood there, racking my brains, trying to figure out what comes after the shampoo. My vision was all muddled up like I was seeing pieces of a jigsaw puzzle that didn't fit together. My partner took me to Emerge, where the doctor waved a pencil in front of my eyes. It looked like there were 10 pencils. My voice was too slow and it echoed in my ears. The doctor gave me a link to a website with some concussion guidelines and told me to follow up with my GP if the symptoms lasted more than a week. I didn't follow the guidelines. Within a week, I could barely stand. And at that point, I had to admit to my clients, my family, and myself, this was serious. I found a coach to cover my riding lessons. I sent clients to horse shows with pages of notes without me. I suspended the young horses I had in training. And my mother celebrated her recent retirement by bringing me home to care for me full time. It was a year and a half before I could work full time in a new career. Three and a half years later, I still have a headache that never goes away. I'm still in vision therapy. I have trouble with my memory. I need earplugs in loud places. I'm still overwhelmed by the grocery store. It's hard to understand what an invisible injury feels like. I have always been a tough athlete, able to push through anything. Not this. It will floor you. And recovery doesn't happen on its own. Every day I push at my limits in therapy and at the gym. I have to to train enough endurance to get through the day. I've come an incredibly long way in my recovery and I'm privileged to have the education, drive and support to find success in spite of it. It could have turned out a lot worse. I still ride a little, but now less and less. Even a slight jostle to the brain is enough to set me back months in recovery and my coordination will never be what it used to be. I have to give up the sports I love. Here's what I learned too late and what I hope will make at least one person make better choices than I did. I learned that returning to activities too soon can exponentially prolong the recovery time of a traumatic brain injury. I learned that a neck injury is a brain injury. Your brain stem is in there. I learned that because of the trauma to my brain, I'm at a heightened risk for brain related diseases later in life, such as Alzheimer's or CTE. And as brutal as that is, if I hadn't been wearing a helmet, my mom might still be caring for me right now, or I might not be around at all. If you suspect a brain injury or a neck injury, or you don't feel right after a fall, don't get back on. Don't ignore or hide your symptoms like I did. Get checked out right away and follow your doctor's guidelines. And always wear a helmet. It's not worth permanent disability or your life.